All right guys, today we're gonna do a video that's a little bit of a mix up and a fun video, hopefully at least. And so today we're gonna go over a handful of defensive blades that are new to the channel and that I think are worth sharing. And so a lot of these are EDC slash defensive, but the two on the left, definitely are more defensive and less EDC, and the two on the right are more of a hybrid of defensive and EDC. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it and let's talk about the first two on the left. So these two, like I said, are definitely more defensive and this guy is not necessarily super new to the channel, but I think it's worth talking about because I've seen uh, Black Triangle Group um, getting a little bit more attention and I think it's worth continuing to talk about them because I think they do make some really cool products and I don't know if I would necessarily you know own every single black triangle group knife out there um, but they do make some really cool products and owning one or two of them is definitely something that I would at least encourage for special situations so like I was saying this is the black triangle group or BTG Senka in particular they make a handful of different uh, knives like the midnight creeper and different designs um, aside from those but overall they all have the same purpose in mind and that is to be essentially a g10 defensive tool that you can carry in non-conducive or non-permissive environments so it gives you a tool that will go through things like metal detectors and rudimentary things obviously this isn't encouraging to break rules or break laws but it does ultimately come down to you for your own self-defense so i like companies like black triangle group because they try to give Give you a way to be able to be responsible for your self-defense even if the places that you go or just so happen to end up in are not necessarily the most self-defense friendly so this like i said is a black triangle group senka and they make multiple different sizes and you know blade shapes and stuff depending on what you need specifically and i do really appreciate that because something like the senka might be a little bit too long for some you know concealments but for the most part i think this one fits me very well and i am very easily able to conceal it i also like the fact that it's super grippy they use an epoxy to essentially epoxy stabilize this nylon rope um, to the handle so it is very very grippy and it gives you tons of traction so like I said that is the black triangle group Senka I get tons of questions about it pretty much always and so I try to say its name as many times as possible all right next one up is a little less attainable and this is the Microtech TAC now the tack p is essentially as i've said in other videos just a super scaled up version of like a hypodermic needle and it has a very very sharpened cutting edge with a hollowed out portion or really the whole of the blade is hollowed out now some people might think that's for intimidation i personally think they made it this way one because it's probably cheaper to make a tube but also two to make it light and that's why it has all of these different holes in it um, it's really for lightning features or to make it more lightweight that's why like i said it's a tube is because it is very stabby very sharp but also incredibly light weight for being fully metal now granted like i said it's important to keep in mind this is fully metal so it will not pass a metal detector but if you're looking for something that you know is just going to be super slim super concealable but you're not necessarily worried about having to be you know checked by a metal detector something like the tac p is going to be the way to go in addition to this too Unlike, unfortunately, things like the G10 knife, this is going to be a lot more stable, a lot more durable. So if you find yourself in a situation where you have to use this tool, it's not going to, you know, the tip's not likely going to snap. It's going to do a lot of damage self-defense wise, and it's going to keep you safe in a pinch. So like I said, the Microtech TAC P is a really cool one. These are, like I said, not the easiest to get your hands on, but if you do find one, I would highly encourage picking them up because they are definitely really cool blades. I'd say about the only thing I kind of dislike about the Tag P is that its sheath draw is a little bit difficult, and I think that's because it has a very, very tight um, Kydex sheath, and it's kind of surrounding a circular, you know, object. So this is a very stiff 
draw, but it can be done. And of course you have an ulti clip on it that will keep it on your belt or on, you know, whatever you're carrying while you pop it out. All right, the next two up are going to be more hybrids of self-defense slash utility. Now, I've talked about limitedly the TKL Knives Nightshade, so I'll talk about it a little bit more in this video. This is the reverse Tonto version of their Nightshade, and this guy is made out of 80 CRV2, and once again, it is a really good hybrid knife between utility and self-defense. You have that large, oversized karambit ring that you can easily you know, snake your finger into or fingers into for drawing or for holding in whatever you need. It fits really well in a reverse or ice pick grip as well as a more standard or traditional grip. Um, so it's a really functional blade, once again, regardless to whether you're just trying to open a box with it or potentially open a person with it. So you do have that sharpened upper swedge on the reverse Tonto as well that gives you a little bit more options for how you want to deploy this knife and use it. So it definitely is a self-defense oriented blade. And I really like the overall size and shape of the nightshade. I think it really lends its hand quite well to doing many different tasks and purposes. So that is the first one up. Then switching over to another one that I think most people are probably not going to be familiar with. This is the Work Tough Gear um, or WTG uh, Ninjuko. I think I'm trying to, I think I'm saying that right, Ninjuko. It's a really kind of hybrid name between Ninja and Puko. So this knife was designed by Joe Flowers. And for those who don't know, Joe Flowers is a, you know, super bushcrafty type guy. So this was designed as a hybrid knife between a kind of wilderness like Puko styled blade and a kind of more Japanese um, kind of maybe like katana you could say or not katana but tanto um, style blade so a smaller kind of knife and so you see a lot of inspiration of both like this handle itself is very puko styled especially with this rear portion here kind of flared up then this um, blade shape the blade shape itself is more tanto styled but um, it itself it itself is um, kind of like I said, more uh, Japanese inspired. However, you see a lot of traces of um, kind of the Puko style to it. So you have a zero degree grind. So you see this is zero degree grind where I think there is a slight micro bevel to that very cutting edge, but you can see that pretty much it is just a zero degree grind, pretty much a Scandinavian grind. In addition, that kind of like survival or bushcraftiness is carried onto the spine because this is a sharpened spine. It's kind of hard to show on camera, but this is rest assured a sharpened spine. So you could strike ferro rods off the back of it. Now, I don't know if I would necessarily encourage, you know, really serious bushcraft work with this primarily because it is a thinner blade stock material. So you guys can see here, this uh, TCAL is closer to three sixteenths of an inch thick, whereas the Ninjuko is closer to an eighth of an inch thick. So still, you know, technically durable and it is of course full tang, but uh, you know, there is large cuts to the center of the blade. So I'm not entirely sure, you know, like I would go, you know, on a serious bushcraft outing with this guy. But I think once again, as a hybrid kind of self-defense EDC, see, um, you know, wilderness blade, it can flex into a lot of different categories. It's also pretty darn lightweight and it is a decent size to do quite a few different things. So I think it overall is a really good um, bridge or it gaps a lot of bridges and it is a very versatile blade. So that's an Injuco by Work Tough Gear and like I said, um, by Joe Flowers. It's just a really neat blade. I thought it was cool. I had to pick it up um, because of the fact that it was like this weird EDC styled Puko slash self-defense knife. So I thought it was cool. Um, it is made out of it is made of N690CO, so it is a stainless steel as well. So you don't necessarily have to worry about corrosion as much as something like ADCRV2, but it still is going to have decent edge retention and decent cutting performance. So overall, a really cool blade. And that wraps it up for 
different self-defense knives. And I think it's hard to break down and do a you know serious self-defense video or self-defense knife video every so often when I get new blades. So I thought I would do a quicker kind of overview video here talking about some of the newer additions to my collection. It just showcasing some really cool um, self-defense EDC and um, even, you know, semi wilderness blades. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video as always. God bless. And I'm out.